Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started this afternoon. Um, and again, uh, feel free to ask any questions along the way, or we can certainly, um, I'll answer questions as I can, um, and we'll leave some room at the, at the end for questions as well. So what we're gonna talk about today is, is specifically estate and gift tax planning uh, for our foreign national clients. So you know, the rules are different depending on where a person lives and where a person intends to live. And those rules can lead to significant difference in tax treatment when it comes to estate and gift taxes. So the, st the resident status of, of the individual does help us determine their liabilities. So whether they're a foreign citizen currently living or planning to live in the U.S. or a foreign citizen who owns a business or other assets located in the U.S. or in addition may have a spouse uh, who intends to transfer U.S. property to each other or one or both of the spouses are not U.S. citizens all have an impact on the estate and gift taxes that may hit those individuals later on in life. So... Again, in the U.S.-based assets may be subject to federal transfer tax, uh, so an estate or gift tax, as high as 40% with only a very small exemption available. So like we said, where you live matters. Uh, what This is based on where the, a person actually primarily lives um, when determining the estate taxes. Under U.S. estate and gift tax laws, a person who is not a U.S. citizen um, can either be considered a resident alien or a non-resident alien. So a resident alien is typically defined as anyone who holds a green card or li lives or is present in the U.S. for approximately 183 days per year. And then based on those facts and circumstances, they may also be a, considered a resident alien if their primary home is in the U.S., uh, they have no def definite present intent to leave um, and a person who does not meet those criteria, um, you should be seeing something on the screen. Let me go ahead and see if I can share again. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Oh, it looks like the share word that time. So um, again, so criteria for, for resident alien and the resident alien is what is actually defined. Uh, so resident alien is anyone who is a perm as would otherwise be a, considered a permanent resident of the U S um, they hold a green card um, lives or is present in the U S for approximately 183 days a year. And then, so technically their primary home is in the U.S. and they have no definite present intent to leave. And anyone that doesn't meet those criteria uh, would, under, would be considered a non-resident alien. So both resident and non-resident aliens may have unique estate and gift tax planning needs. If they own real property in the U.S., own a business in the U.S. or have more than $60,000 in U.S.-based assets. So we'll go through a couple of examples of how this might affect your non or your foreign national clients, and then we'll look at why that matters or what the factors actually are in determining the status. So we have Amy and Michael. Hang on one second. I think there's a, some issues with the sound. Um, I went ahead and muted and then unmuted again to see if we could get um, any better sound. I don't know if I have the ability to change that if folks are having trouble hearing, uh, but we are doing, we are. Okay, thank you. Um, this is being recorded as well as at the end of this, I'll go through contact information as far as how to reach me personally. And I'm happy to always walk through any questions that anyone has. 
Um, so when we look at a couple of examples, um, we've got Amy and Michael are married. Uh, they, both, they are residents and citizens of China, but have family that lives in the U.S. So Michael and Amy found that they were often visiting their relatives in the U.S. and decided to purchase a vacation home near their family to use while they were visiting. Um, so under the non-resident alien state tax rules, if Michael were to pass away, Amy may be required to pay estate taxes on that vacation home and any other U.S.-based assets in excess of $60,000. Since Amy is not a U.S. resident, there's no variable available marital deduction or other exclusions, resulting in potentially a 40% federal estate tax. Another example to start with is Juan and Maria. Uh, they are also married, uh, but do have their primary residence in the U.S. Uh, Juan and Maria met while Juan was working as an engineer for a U.S. firm based in Mexico. Juan is a citizen of the U.S. and Maria is a citizen of Mexico. Uh, we'll say that they own business and have diverse investment portfolios uh, in the U.S. If Juan were to predecease Maria, she may owe estate taxes on any assets in excess of the current estate deduction unless the assets are transferred through a qualified trust. Uh, this is due to the fact that Maria would not be a U.S. citizen. So, um, again, any marital deduction follows the, the spouse who survives. And, again, anything in, above that $60,000 would be subject to 40%. So... How do we determine what effect the, ans the answers to these questions have on a spouse? So, it so whether or not there's an exemption or a deduction available, um, it the person who is either transferring or receiving the assets matters. So we're looking at um, whose resident status matters for which type of exemption, exclusion, or marital deduction. So for a tax exemption, the tax exemption follows the residency status of the person who is transferring the assets. So essentially the person who would, um, who has passed away. So for, and then for a tax exclusion, that those exclusions follow the residency status of the person who is receiving the assets. In addition, we also have the marital deduction, which follows the person again, receiving the assets so the person that survives. So there's a couple questions to ask when we're looking at um, tax planning for foreign nationals. So the first thing we have to figure out is what assets are includable in the estate. We need to know how much of an exemption is available. Is there marital deduction available for a spouse? And then how are the assets actually being transferred? Again, these questions can be answered once we, the, the first thing we need to do is figure out that residency status of, of both partners. So once we determine the residency status of the of the husband and wife or the spouses, the next question becomes what assets are actually included in the estate. So for a U.S. citizen or a resident alien, their estate taxes and gift tax planning is based on all worldwide assets. For a non-resident alien, we're based we're looking at only those based in the U.S. U.S.-based assets include all tangible property in real estate located in the U.S., so that includes any stocks, uh, bonds, any kind, of, any you know, artwork, anything tangible that uh, can be located in the U.S. However, why we're talking about this is that life insurance is not considered U.S. property for estate tax planning purposes for non-resident aliens. So once we determine how much, how many assets or what assets are available and what the value of those assets are, uh, depending on the estate, the next question is going to be how much of an exemption is available. And again, this depends on that residency status as well. So when we talk about the U.S. citizen or resident alien, essentially those whose primary domicile or primary home is in the U.S., with the 
With the change in taxes in 2000, at the end of 2017, that estate tax exemption is currently $11,180,000. So resident aliens can claim the same estate tax exemption as a U.S. citizen. However, what didn't change with the job, with the tax act in 2017 was the exemption available for non-resident aliens. So non-resident aliens are limited to a $60,000 exemption for estate taxes. And remember, anything above that $60,000 could be assessed taxes at 40%. So in addition to the exemption, Depending on the residency status of the surviving spouse, a marital deduction may also be available. So if the surviving spouse or that person who's receiving the assets is a U.S. citizen, they receive an unlimited marital deduction, meaning no taxes are owed on assets that are transferred from a predeceasing spouse. However, this is where it changes. So for any foreign national, whether they're a resident alien or a non-resident alien, no marital deduction is allowed. So that pretty much covers the high level. So what we have, so we have a quick table here to kind of review um, how that works. So again, it dep- it, the residency status of both Parties matters, uh, whether the assets are transferred from a U.S. citizen, resident alien, or non-resident alien, or the assets are transferred to someone with foreign nat- as a foreign national, will change how the assets are actually taxed and what the exemption may be, whether or not there's a marital deduction um, or other exclusions for gift taxes. So one way for spouses transferring assets um, to a foreign national spouse is in order to gain that marital deduction or something similar in order to defer the taxes owed is to use something that's called a qualified domestic trust or a QDOT. And what a QDOT does uh, is it allows the spouses to transfer taxes or transfer assets from the deceased spouse through a trust, and then trust income is then passed to the foreign national surviving spouse. That trust income is uh, is taxed at ordinary income rates, but is but the asset, the estate assets themselves, are not taxed at estate tax rates. So again, just to recap, if assets are being transferred directly to a foreign national spouse, no marital deduction is allowed. Therefore, only the exclusion or exemption that will apply is that which is allowable based on the residency status of that deceased spouse. However, again, if assets are transferred to a QDOT, then the assets are not included in the estate for tax purposes, and the spouse can receive income from the trust outside of those requirements. However, the QDOT does have specific requirements itself as to how it's set up and how it functions in order to avoid those transfer taxes. So for creation, the trust must give the benefit a crummy power, um, which is a legal term that gives the beneficiaries the right to actually demand trust assets. So the spouse that's the benefit beneficiary of the trust would need to be able to have the right to request trust assets be released from the trust, but only to the extent of any gift annual exclusions. It also must be created by the U.S. spouse or the surviving spouse must create this within nine months of receiving the property through the estate transfer. For distributions, if assets are transferred to the trust, the trust can pay any income from those assets to the surviving spouse outside of the decedent's estate, but the proceeds may be subject to income taxes. 
In addition, if that surviving spouse in the future does become a U.S. citizen, all assets from the trust can be distributed using that marital deduction. So uh, if they if they're in the process of becoming a U.S. citizen or have an intention to be a U.S. citizen down the road, um, we've advised clients to go ahead and set up the QDOT for the immediate purposes um, in order to have the estate taxes transferred to the trust initially and then would be able to guarantee that marital deduction uh, once U.S. citizenship has been received. Some of the benefits, again, of the QDOT is it allows for the estate tax marital deduction uh, for transfer to a non-citizen spouse. Um, it also allows them to defer the payment of the estate tax until the death of the surviving non-spouse. Um, so, again, the what this does is it defers the estate tax, uh, so no estate tax is assessed at the time of the deceased spouse. However, the estate tax would still be required uh, upon the death of the surviving spouse. Um, so additional reporting requirements of trust assets are over $2 million. Um, so you want to work with a, with a trustee that is experienced in this area. Um, principal distributions is, are taxed as part of the deceased spouse's estate. So if that surviving spouse does request trust assets to be distributed, those would be distributed at with the 40% tax. Um, and it only defers the estate tax liability. It does not actually decrease it or um, delete it. So a QDOT may be a great option for transferring cash um, or other assets to a spouse in order to defer the estate tax. Um, there are limitations as to how much access the surviving spouse may have to those assets in order to preserve the benefits of tax deferral. And in addition, the QDOT is, is only available option for a spouse, and it can't be used to defer estate taxes that may be owed on transfers to children, grandchildren, or other beneficiaries and heirs. But we do have another solution um, in addition to the QDOT. So life insurance is actually a great way to help our foreign national clients um, with some of these tax planning ideas. Um, it may provide the death benefit protection, the long-term tax benefits, asset security, and certainty in estate planning for foreign nationals. And again, uh, keeping in mind that life insurance is not considered a U.S.-based asset for gift and estate tax purposes, meaning for our foreign national clients, um, whether it's a resident alien or a non-resident alien, uh, the Life insurance is, that is not includable in their estate. So in addition to the fact that it's not includable in the estate and it offers um, the same benefits that life insurance would offer to any of our U.S. citizen clients, um, additionally, there are characteristics of a life insurance policy that may assist foreign nationals with special estate and tax planning needs. Um, the proceeds payable under life insurance policy, again, are not considered a tangible U.S.-based asset and are not subject to U.S. taxes for non-resident aliens. Um, as with any policy sold to a native a U.S. citizen individual, um, benefits payable under a life insurance policy are generally income tax-free. Uh, in a permanent life insurance policy, any growth in the cash value is tax-deferred. And then the cash value may also be accessed income tax-free using policy loans or withdrawals. Um, and also the, um, any of the other living benefits that are available uh, in, the, in our policies are also available for foreign nationals. So by using life insurance as part of the estate plan, a uh, policy owner may be able to provide a tax-free benefit to their heirs in order to pay any of those U.S. estate taxes um, that might be owed in excess of the $60,000 exemption without having to actually sell any property. Um, they also may be able to provide, provide some wealth transfer to beneficiaries uh, after any tax liabilities are met. Um, it, beyond the estate and tax planning benefits of life insurance policy itself, um, there are other benefits for foreign nationals um, that they may find in participating in the U.S. life insurance market. 
Um, so research has shown that the U.S. life insurance market is one of the most mature in the world, um, which allows for improved product design and has the most competitive product pricing. The U.S. life insurance is highly regulated uh, through both federal and state oversight, and is considered one of the most stable in the world as well. Um, we're also able to provide estate planning confidence with that stability um, and the competitive pricing, knowing that they're getting a good deal on that. Um, in addition, with the contract and benefits denominated in U.S. dollars, the policy provides financial confidentiality, wealth diversification, and economic security that may, may or may not otherwise be available um, to a foreign national from their home, um, in their home country. Um, and then the U.S. life insurance contract does provide the personal freedom to choose beneficiaries um, and it has allowed some of our clients to avoid the concern of that for, of forced airship um, whose, home in the, whose home country requires a specific inheritance. So regardless of the policy owner's citizen status, um, a life insurance policy um, may also help with many other needs such as income protection, business succession planning, legacy planning, wealth protection, um, and executive benefit planning. Um, so again, all of the same benefits that are afforded to our U.S. citizen-based clients um, are also there available for our foreign national clients, in addition to some additional um, estate tax planning. So, so that's the end of this presentation. Um, again, what we're all taking now, um, we'll go out to our national life page, and I'll show you where you can actually access um, this this presentation, along with some other flyers that we have, um, we've also set up the. Let me just pull this up here real quick. So let me share my screen again. Okay. So, as I share this screen as well, um, I think I lost. Give me just a second. There we go. Okay. So, in order to find information on myself and my team and all the information in that PowerPoint that was just shared. Um, if you start with financial professionals on the National Life homepage, um, you can scroll down to Advanced Markets. Um, in the Advanced Markets team, we focus primarily on our business owner marketplace, um, but we also do things such as foreign nationals and multi-life arrangements and premium financing. Um, so for, if you're looking for information on us um, or if you wanted to contact me directly with any questions that you have, um, I'm happy to talk through cases as they come up with your clients. If you click on this Our Team button, um, you'll see information here on the, uh, on the Advanced Market Training, and this is me, um, and my, this is my direct contact information, email, and phone number if you have any questions. Um, we also have the other advanced marketing specialists that you may have worked with on other um, concerns and other projects as well. Um, over on the left-hand side of the screen, we do have a link here for our foreign nationals um, specifically. So from here, you'll be able to – so this presentation is the one that we just went through. Um, it is up to date, and it is – primarily the same. Um, the, all of our materials are client-facing, so can be used with any of your clients. Um, we also have consumer literature, so we have a couple of flyers. So we have the benefits of owning U.S. life insurance for foreign nationals, um, as well as an overview of the gift and estate tax issues. So either of these can be clicked on. We do also have them both in Spanish and Mandarin available uh, for you, and again, our client facing. So this is the high level um, overview of what assets are included. Are there any exemptions, and who do the exemptions follow? Um, as well as any other special considerations, such as the marital deductions. So that is available for you as well to use with and leave with clients 
um, should you need. We also have, um, under agent resources, we also have the underwriting guidelines for foreign nationals. Um, these, the foreign national underwriting guidelines is not something that I'm particularly um, an expert on, but will answer any questions that I can and also connect you with the right underwriting folks in order to make sure that the, um, the questions that you have are receiving the right answers. So, Louis, I hope that answers your question as far as where you can learn more. Um, so, again, that's under on the National Life homepage, Financial Professionals, Advanced Markets, and then Foreign Nationals is the tab. Um, and, again, all, all of our, or excuse me, a majority of what's available on the Advanced Markets site, um, whether it's going to be qualified plans, executive benefits, Foreign Nationals, um, most of that is available for client facing. And again, if you do have any questions in the future, um, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Again, um, you can find me and my colleagues on the Advanced Markets page, um, front and center. And then um, again, if you click on the Our Team, um, my direct information, email and phone number are available there for you. Um, so the question that we have is the agent who sells life insurance must be in the primary resident state for the foreign national. Um, yes. So where the foreign national or where the foreign national's business, where the life insurance is going to be domiciled for purposes of that sale, the agent does need to be licensed in that state. So, like I said, um, this presentation is pretty short. It keeps it pretty high level, just giving you the basic talking points. Um, if your clients have any estate planning or tax planning concerns um, when working with the foreign national marketplace. Uh, again, the, the key takeaways is the fact that even though the estate tax doubled last year with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, um, that was not doubled, um, and they did not change the exemption for foreign nationals. So for non-resident aliens, we're still looking at a very low, minimal $60,000 exemption. Um, for any of your clients that own real estate or property in the U.S., um, I would I would bet that um, that property is more than that $60,000, and anything above that could potentially be subject to 40% of state taxes if they were to pass away. Um, again, in addition to that, we're looking at um, the fact that life insurance is not part of that estate for foreign nationals, which is different from um, from U.S. citizens. So using a life insurance contract uh, in order to fund any of those estate taxes or to leave any inheritance for your clients um, may be a really great way and a pretty simple way in order to do that estate and gift tax planning. So unless there are more questions, I'm going to um, go ahead and sign off. Um, again, like I said, feel free to contact me. I am available, and um, we look forward to hearing from you. Good luck on your cases.